All right, well today let's take a look at this 2008 Ford pickup with a 5.4 liter engine. Now we're going to go in and replace the cam phaser. That's a pretty popular job on a lot of these Ford trucks. And there's, there's some uh, skill involved with this particular job. And there's a way to do it right and there's a way to do it wrong. We're going to show you the right way here today. And if not, you're going to see what not to do. But I'm going to go ahead and replace this, this cam phaser assembly. We're going to install it properly. We're going to line up the little mark on the back here. Make sure that we don't damage our new one or break the camshaft itself. While we're in there doing that job, we're going to replace this actuator as well. While you're already in there, you get the valve cover off. Good idea to replace the control actuator. And one of the key tools to doing this job is this wedge tool. Now you can see it's got some nice little hand grips built in here. We're going to pop the valve cover off. We're going to wedge this down inside the engine there and prevent the chain tensioner from collapsing while we've got the chain and the cam off here to do this job. So, we've got three great parts we're going to install here. First thing I need to do is pull off this passenger side valve cover. Let's get started. All right, one of the first things I'm going to do here is pinch the electrical connector on our actuator solenoid and remove that out of the way. Now I'm going to take an uh, eight millimeter socket with my 3 8 ratchet and extension and start to remove all these bolts here that hold the valve cover in place. There's quite a few of them and some of these up front here are pretty easy to get to. The rear ones are a little more difficult to access but it's not the world's hardest job so you can get to them. So let's, uh, let's start working our way all the way around this valve cover. So now we've got all the bolts out. We're going to pull the valve cover up out of the hole here. So it's a tight squeeze. I'm not going to lie to you. I had to pull a few items out of the way to, to gain some access in here. The coils had to come out and uh, it was a tight fit. Now I'm going to take my quarter inch ratchet with my T25 socket and we're going to work on getting this actuator out of here. So it breaks loose relatively easily. I'm just going to spin this out by hand here and turn that bolt all the way up out of there. And it's a pretty long bolt so it takes a little bit to pop this out. Once that's loose, I can rock this back and forth, pull it up out of the bore. Not a lot of effort, and it came up here. So, one of the things I want to do right away is take a look at the screens in here. These are the oil passages. Now this one looks pretty clean. The owner probably took pretty good care of this vehicle, and there's, there's not a lot of sludge built up in here, and uh, that, that's a good thing to see. So, we're going to discard this entire unit. Our new one comes with a new bolt comes with new ceiling washers, etc. All the pieces we need. So I'm going to set this off to the side here, and that's done. Next we're going to go get the cam sensor out of the front of the timing cover. That's going to be in our way here for when I put that wedge tool down inside here. So as I mentioned, we need to get some clearance in here. So in order to get this cam sensor out of the way, I'm going to take my quarter inch ratchet with my 8 millimeter socket, and I'm going to pull the bolt out of the cam sensor. That's going to allow me to slide that out of the way, and we'll take our wedge tool and get that down in there against the timing chain tensioner. Then, it's a little difficult to see here, you know, we have the dipstick tube and, and the battery kind of in the way, but I'm going to go ahead and take a paint marker and mark the timing chain here to the old cam phaser. Then we'll pull the bolt out and we're going to be ready to remove the old unit. So we've got our new cam phaser here, and right away you'll see that there's an R, and on the other side there's an L. And so being that this is on the right hand side of the engine, we need to line up where the arrow is here and, and make a scribe mark on our timing chain. What that's going to do, that's going to help us when we install our new one later on, and it's going to show us where to put the chain with the cam again, and so we know that our engine will be properly timed. So I'm just taking a pick tool here and making a scribe mark so I have a good mark on my chain before I do anything else. Now I'm going to take a ratchet with a 15 millimeter socket and grab on the bolt on the front of the cam here and I'm simply going to break it loose. I don't want to remove this yet. I'm just going to break that bolt loose for now so that it's going to be much easier to remove the, the phaser or the gear assembly from the cam once we get it up on the bench. So now that that is loose, 
we are going to take our wedge tool and I'm going to slide that down here in between the timing chains by the tensioner and what that's going to do, that's going to hold the tensioner from collapsing and that will keep the chain in place in order to allow us to remove the camshaft. All right, we've got all of our cam caps loose. I've set them off on the bench now in uh, numerical order so I can reinstall them in the exact same position and direction in which I remove them. So you can see my cam is you can see my cam is moving back and forth here and so it's loose. Now I'm going to pick it up a little bit from the bottom. Now it's very important, remember I've got that wedge tool in place, that's holding the tensioner out so it doesn't collapse and we lose that. So I'm going to tip the cam forward and I'm going to use my other hand here to work the chain up off the cam and it's going to allow me to remove the entire cam assembly up out of the engine. Well now that we've got our camshaft and our gear out, remember we've already loosened up that bolt on the front here. So we can just pull this old one off. We're going to actually discard our old bolt. This one actually has some oil passageways in there and our new cam phaser, made in the USA, comes with a brand new bolt the required hardware to replace this one with. So we can discard our old bolt. Now this comes off relatively easily here and we can set our old one off to the side. Now you'll see there's a little notch on the camshaft here and on the back side of our phaser there is a little knob that's going to have to be lined up with this hole on the camshaft. Once we get this lined up in place, I'm going to start the bolt and run it down so it's finger tight. Now proper alignment of that little dowel and the notch on the camshaft is one of the primary reasons why it's important to remove the camshaft from the truck. Now I know a lot of technicians will try and slide this off the chain with the camshaft in place in the truck. While that's a great idea to save time, if you don't get this lined up properly, what ends up happening is that a uh, dowel pin gets sheared off and people try and return this as a defective unit. Now it's important to do it here on the bench. I've got it locked in place properly. We're ready to put this back in the truck. Once it's back in the truck, we get our chain on it. I'm going to line up my little marks here that I made on the chain with this mark and then I'm going to retorque my bolt. As you can see, I've gone ahead and reinstalled everything in the truck here. Now, yes, it's a little bit of a chore. We have to sneak this gear underneath the chain, and it's very important, remember, to line up the arrow with the scribe mark I made previously on the chain. Once that's all done, set it back in place. Had to make sure that all the followers were in place as well. Didn't want to drop any of those. And then I set the cam back into its bore here, and then took the caps. Remember, we kept those uh, individually separated so we could reinstall them in the same location and direction we did previously. Of course we lubricate those a little bit with some engine oil and then torqued them down. It's very important to work your way through these back and forth to get the whole thing set down lightly and then go back and torque these down properly. Once those are done being torqued down I was able to go to the cam bolt here. Remember we got a new bolt with our new phaser. And so I was able to torque that down and we're all set. Everything's locked in place, timed properly. Now we can go ahead and remove our wedge tool. So I'm gonna slide that up out of here. And now we can set the wedge tool off to the side. I can go ahead and reinstall my cam sensor here on the front of the timing cover and also, remember we told you earlier, we were going to replace the control solenoid. So, I'm going to find a little bit of engine oil down here, get a little bit on my fingers, and we'll lubricate this. Just make sure it slides into the bore. Work it back and forth gently. 
This comes with a new bolt as well. Get that lined up properly. I'll start it by hand here using my T25 Torx bit. Now I'm going to grab my ratchet, torque this into place, and then we're ready to reinstall the valve cover, the ignition coils, and the truck's going to be ready to start up. We've gone ahead and replaced our cam phaser and our control solenoid here on this Ford F250 with a 5.4 liter engine. A couple things you want to remember is it's very important to remove the camshaft when doing this job. I know you can sneak this in and out of the chain if you're careful, but you have to be very careful. There's this dowel here on the back side of the phaser. If you don't get it lined up just perfectly and try and slide that onto the cam, this gets sheared off and you damage the camshaft as well. So take our steps here, remove the camshaft from the engine, do it on the bench so you can get it lined up properly and ensure proper long-lasting operation for your customer. Remember, our Made in the USA cam phaser comes with the necessary hardware and the bolt to replace us with, so use the, the new bolt as well. Don't reuse your old bolt. And we've replaced our actuator here. If there are any trouble codes set previously, go in the computer and clear those out. But there's no other relearns or anything done after that. Make sure you use good clean engine oil and keep up on the maintenance of the vehicle. That'll ensure that your timing components last much longer as well. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching. Now you understand how to replace the cam phaser and the control solenoid here on one of these Ford three valve engines with variable valve timing.